Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation and just like promised we have come to part two of the uh, banner advice for the stained glass metals. Now this was probably by far one of the most like intensive amount of research and testing and whatnot that I've had to do on my end uh, in order to put this together for you guys, so I really hope you enjoy it <laughs> Or at least it's helpful for you guys at the very least. But anyways in terms of this video, okay Last video I talked about how I would be mentioning in this one talking about which of the stained glass metals So all six of the stained glass metals out of all six of them Which ones are the best ones to get which ones would you actually most likely end up using the most out of all six? in any given situation and of course as a result of that which one would you rather pull for so that way you can get the most bang for your buck for your jewels uh now before i get started on telling you guys how exactly i went about doing this uh i want to give a quick review about a few things that uh that are kind of necessary pre prerequisites to of like to know about uh before like how I made this material, how I got the data makes any sense to you, okay? The first one being, and this one's actually gonna be kind of basic. So up here on the screen right now, I have a picture that I made like a couple months ago or something. I posted it on Reddit, but I recently just like kind of updated it just slightly. Uh, but I'm planning to use this picture right here in a future tutorial video teaching you guys how to make uh, proper Keyblade setups like for any keyblade whatsoever okay this is like a generic guide a beginner's guide to making keyblade setups okay and i'm not going to go over this whole thing so the first thing i want to point out to you guys is the fact that i have mentioned here on this picture that slots one or two are going to be your primary buffer and debuffer metals and are just your copy metals okay and then off to the side i have little uh, mentions about each specific slot okay so slot one the attribute doesn't matter uh, so you're not going for damage at all. Okay, you're literally just going for the buff and debuff Okay, and for slot two as I have here on the right I've also mentioned that these like you want to match the slots attribute for slot two if possible But it's not required at all because keep in mind uh, Slots one and two as I pointed out before are gonna be your primary buffer and debuffer metals and copy metals So they're not there for damage if they do damage. That's great, but they're not necessary okay the damage is not required at all whatsoever when making good setups okay so that's the first thing i wanted to point out the second thing that i want to point out has a bit of background behind how keyblades are in general okay so in case you didn't know if you haven't been playing the game long enough or you just never paused to think about it or haven't realized it and whatnot but each keyblade in the game Ha already has a predetermined set of strategies that you can use for each specific keyblade um, and they are entirely determined by the copy metals in the game and the buffer and the main meta buffer debuffer metals in the game. Okay, those are the two things that primarily determine the type of strategies that you use for each specific keyblade. Okay, so right here on the screen, I have, for example, the starlight. Okay, we're going to use the starlight for example. On the starlight, we have three different attributes that we can use. Okay, we have magic upright speed upright and power reverse just mentioning those three attributes we know off the top of our head that there are six possible copy metals that we can use on the starlight for magic reverse we have key art beginning which is a backwards copy metal we have hd or kingdom hearts 2 nominee which is a forwards copy metal uh, for speed upright we have key, key art bonds which is backwards copy metal HD Antiform Sora, which is a forwards copy metal. And for Power Reverse, we have HD Shion, which is a forwards copy metal, and HD Riku Replica, who is a backwards copy metal. And just a quick recap as to what a forwards and backwards copy metal is a forwards copy metal copies the next metal after it, whereas a backwards copy metal copies the metal that came before it. Okay, so whatever was used last is what will get copied so knowing this so taking this into account now okay all right so now that we've determined which copy metals are available to use on the starlight uh we now want to combine that knowledge with the knowledge i just pointed out in the uh in that picture i showed you guys about the slots one and two we want to combine the copycat knowledge with the slot knowledge okay so we know the first two slots in the setup are meant for main buffers and debuffer metals okay damage isn't required but i mean obviously if we can get it 
that would be nice, okay? So just looking at how the slots are organized on the starlight right here, I want you to take a second and think about uh, what are the possible strategies that might be used on the starlight? Okay, for some of you, that's this might be really easy and like beginner level stuff. For some other of you uh, who may have never thought about it, you might have to think about it for a second. If you don't want me to spoil it, pause the video right now. I'll give you five seconds before I go on. One, two. All right, but just looking at the starlight and looking at the six copy metals that we're able to possibly use on the starlight. These are the different types of strategies that we can possibly use for the starlight, okay? Okay, so this right here is one possible strategy that we could use on the starlight. And just to point it out, this setup right here is focused on a power reverse strategy. And I'm going to go ahead and take a second just to quickly show that and explain it for anybody here who might be a beginner and not understand how, okay? HD Anti Form Sora here is a forwards copy middle, meaning that he's going to copy the power reverse slot right here. So whatever power reverse metal is in this slot, he's going to become an exact copy of and become a power reverse metal himself. Okay. Key Art Bonds over here is a backwards copy metal, which will be also be copying the power reverse slot for uh, itself as well. So Key Art Bonds is also going to become a power reverse metal when it get, when it copies. And then what you will want to do, okay, is that we have Kingdom Hearts 2 Nominate, you could also use HD Nominate, either one is fine. But we have Kingdom Hearts 2 Nominate right here, and what you would want to do is you would also want to put another Power Reverse Metal in your Spirit Slot right here, so that way when Kingdom Hearts 2 Nominate copies the Spirit Slot, she becomes a Power Reverse Metal herself. And this is just one possible strategy that you could use for the Starlight, this is the Power Reverse strategy. Here's another example for the Starlight, okay? This setup right here for the Starlight is based on a speed upright setup for the Starlight, okay? So the, how this would work, and it's pretty much the same exact thing, is that you would have your main buffer here, and you would have a speed upright metal right here, or another buffer debuffer, okay? And then HT Shion over here is going to copy the speed upright slot, and so what that means is that she'll become a speed upright metal herself when she copies that slot. And then you're going to do the same thing as last time. You're going to have your nominee metal here. And you're going to have a speed upright metal right here in your spirit slot. So that way when Kingdom Hearts 2 nominee copies the spirit slot, she also becomes a speed upright metal. These two setups right here are completely different uh, ability wise. But you can figure out these strategies pretty quickly after you've like done it a few times and whatnot. Alright, so now let's throw buffers and debuffer metals into the mix. Let's, th let's throw the, the, the new stained glass metals into the mix, okay? So this is a possible setup that you could use with the new stained glass metals. This uh, metal image coming pseudomer metal right here, that's gonna that's just the placeholder for the speed upright metal uh, for us for global whenever it comes out. But this right here is, is representing the speed upright stained glass metal, okay? And obviously this is uh, stained glass number one where it's magic upright. So what's going on right here with the starlight right here is the fact that because of the fact that we're focusing on just a pure uh speed upright setup we are taking advantage of the fact that we're using our speed upright stained glass metal over here to just carry on through or throughout the whole thing the only reason we're using stained glass number one right here is solely because of the fact to you know start off with the buffers and debuffers that we need if you really wanted to you can still put like a hd nominee right here as well or even illustrated Kyrie ex if you really wanted to the whole point of the strategy is for the setup is to use abuse the speed upright from the stained glass and it just carries on throughout the rest of the setup and essentially becomes a speed upright setup. If you really wanted to, you could do the same exact thing for power reverse strategy. This here is a power reverse strategy. Now, notice how I have stained glass number four right here in the first slot, even though it doesn't match the attribute. If you remember back to that first picture, that beginner's picture that I showed you guys, this one right here, I mentioned that the first two slots aren't there for damage. They're, they're there primarily for buffer and debuffer metals as well as copy metals to copy those buffer and debuffers, okay? They are primarily there for their ability, okay? If they do extra damage, that is great. But if they don't, that is completely fine. That's not what they're there for. So because of this, okay, for the Starlight, because of the fact, like I mentioned beforehand, Antiform Soros copying Power Reverse, Bonds copying Power Reverse, and then we'll have Nominate copying a Power Reverse. Essentially what is happening is, we're having Stained Glass number 4 just carry on through 
the entire setup and it's essentially becoming a power reverse setup. So if you're wondering by now, like, well, okay, wh why am I pointing this out? Well, the whole reason I'm pointing this out is because of the fact that I went through each specific Keyblade in the game and I did exactly what I just showed you guys, okay? And I grabbed every specific possible strategy that each Keyblade is going to most likely end up using. Um, combined it with the main buffer metal, so the stained glass metals, in addition with the uh, Chiron Shion EX metals, and I did pot different possible combinations of stuff, and I grabbed all that data together, and I put together all the data that I write from it, and what I did was, I counted every single time that uh, each individual stained glass metal was used, added up their totals, uh, in order to find out which of the stained glass metals are actually going to be the most versatile out of all six okay now because of the fact that not everybody has the same metals not everybody's gonna get the same amount of stained glass metals i had to take into account three different types of categories okay the first category that i had to take into account was what if you're only using one stained glass metal and that is your primary main buffer and debuffer metal you don't have a Kyrie or shoni x on the setup uh, and you definitely don't have a second stained glass metal to go with it you only have one stained glass metal to use on your setup and knowing just that, what are most likely going to be the stained glass metals you're going to want to use on each keyblade to support their uh, keyblade strategy setups. The predetermined ones that I mentioned before. The second category that I had to take into account was if you actually have Kyrie or Shion EX to go with your stained glass metal, okay? And last but not least, the third category that I had to think about when putting all to this together was what if you decide to use two stained glass metals for every single keyblade in the game okay what are the stained glass metals you're going to end up using for each keyblade to support their that keyblade strategies so after taking all three of these into account i put together my data now unfortunately because of the fact it would take way too long for this video for me to go through each individual keyblade and point out each specific setup that i ended up accounting for for my data what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to put a link down below uh listing a link to my website okay where as i show here on my screen i have a full list on a spreadsheet of all of the keyblade setups i ended up taking into account and ended up using uh for my data and the way to read this, okay, so as you can see right here, I have the, the name of the keyblade right here. I have the how many stained glass metals were used, uh, whether or not you use Kyrie Shion EX, and then like this is the if you're using two stained glass metals, okay. And just to make sure you guys understand how the chart is used, if you see little lines like these, this little like black lines or whatnot, uh, all that means is a blank line. Extra setups like these two, for example, that only means that it's going to apply to like the stroke of midnight right here, okay. These three setups apply to Stroke of Midnight, okay? Basically, whatever the last Keyblade that is shown to the left-hand side is, uh, that's what the setup is applying for. Because uh, some of the Keyblades are going to end up having multiple different types of setups that you can use. So I had to take every single one into account. And these are the ones I'm showing you. I'm showing you all of the ones I took into account. And right above that spreadsheet, I went ahead and I tallied together all of the number of times each specific individual stained glass metal was used in each of these setups in the spreadsheet okay i put together the totals and it arrived at the data uh that's shown right there okay and just for reference for now i have stained glass number five as being the speed upright metal and stained glass number six as being the speed reverse metal the numbers next to them are also organized in the same exact order that the spreadsheet is in, okay? Uh, so the first number is only counting for one stained glass metal, the second number is accounting for a stained glass metal plus a Kyrie Shoni X, and the third number is accounting for if you're using two stained glass metals. Alright, so now, finally, after explaining all of that, okay, and after looking at the data that I have, alright, this, uh, this is the conclusion that I can come to, okay? Out of all six of the stained glass metals, okay, the best or most versatile upright stained glass metal in the game is going, at least as of right now, um, until we get more and better copy metals, is going to be the power upright stained glass metal or otherwise known as stained glass number three. And the best or most versatile reverse stained glass metal in the game is going to be the power reverse stained glass metal or stained glass metal number four keep in mind that just because these are the most versatile 
doesn't mean you have to get them. Remember, just like I mentioned in my last video, make sure you pick the ones that can actually go well with the metals you actually currently own. Just because both the power upright and reverse stained glass metals are the most versatile in the game does not mean that you have to get them, okay? Just a quick disclaimer right there too. Just as a quick mention as well, uh, on my spreadsheet right here, you're able to actually click on each specific uh, thing and it'll take you to a link going to a uh, kxuxtracker.com where I basically put together the uh, setup that the metals would be using and whatnot. If you really wanted to, this can also serve as a great skeleton uh, for future setups for you guys too, utilizing the stained glass metal. So in case any of you are maybe new to the game or whatnot, this might be a great start towards uh, trying to figure out what type of setups you want to try using and whatnot. But other than that, that's it for today, guys. Remember, guys, if you want to check out the data that I use to determine this uh, info myself, uh, you can go ahead and check out the link I'm leaving down below. Uh, I know people had questions about it, and I took a, it took me a long time to figure this out too. I'm glad I finally finished it. I'm pretty satisfied with... Uh, the results and how I put it together. Um, so I would love to hear what you guys have to think about it and whatnot. Just as a quick reminder too, in case you didn't know already, uh, I've already had the uh, stained glass number one and two uh, metal analysis articles already at my, up on my website for like quite a few days or so now. Uh, so if you want to go and check that out, go ahead and check it out on my website. But other than that, that's it for today guys. My name is Brian from Kingdom Martini Cross Nation and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.